Abu Dhabi Dude! Welcome to a, a special edition of the iPace Driver Show. You can maybe notice there's three of us tonight. So myself and Abu Dhabi Dude are joined by Neil McLennan. And Neil, Hi, is, <laughs> Neil is the guy behind What's Up, uh, which is a great app, a navigation app I use quite regularly. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> But, uh, and then, then after that, we'll, myself and ADD will talk about the news because there's an awful lot of that this have been over the last uh, few weeks. Yeah, it's been quite an active period. <laughs> so Neil, how did uh, WhatsApp come about? Well, uh, together with a colleague, uh, Mike, um, we whose inspiration, in fact, it was, and um, who had actually a longer-standing interest in rapid charging uh, before before me. Um, he kept spreadsheets worth of data <laughs> on rapid chargers, their location, their capabilities, um, their operational status, because uh, there was a certain flakiness, and indeed there still is with some units, of course, but there was a certain um, inconsistency of uptime. Uh, and he would keep an eye on that and he would issue tweets to say, oh, this rapid charger's down, this rapid charger's back online again, this one's not working. So that drivers, as they were, you know, going about their day had some indication uh, of what was working and what was not. But that's um, spreadsheets and Twitter is not the most up to date uh, and the most rapid way of uh, communicating with folks when they're on a journey. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, the idea of, of an app came up and I'm, I'm an app developer um, and I also drive electric cars. Um, so I think you, you met some of my colleagues on the EVA Scotland board. I did um, indeed, a yes. A week or two back. Uh, sorry yes, I wasn't video able went. to join you in that occasion. And and that was brilliant. No, we missed you. <laughs> <laughs> that video went up on my channel today, so people can catch up on that and see what a very interesting conversation. And you were mentioned a few times. <laughs> oh, that's very generous of them. And, you know, but I, you know, I, I had a first-gen Leaf, and, you know, this, with a small 24-kilowatt-hour battery, and you know, being being able to find rapid chargers for you know significant journeys um, was is important. Um, I have the newer leaf now, and finding chargers is slightly less um, uh, challenging now for me. Uh, but we we designed the app really with uh, the the novice driver in mind, uh, but also uh, something for the experienced driver. Mike knew of folks who had paper and pen and were working out postcodes for their long journeys. They've got, they've got 300 miles to do and they've got postcodes and GPS coordinates and they're doing distances. And it was just, they would keep spreadsheets of their journey so they would know when to charge and where to charge. And that there has to be a better way of doing this um, across, across the UK. And so uh, the app was born uh, with a view to servicing the novice driver and the experienced driver and giving them range confidence uh, to make their journeys. Most notable about what's up is what's not there. And these are the destination chargers, fast posts and slow posts. Um, it, it's, it's rapid chargers only. Um, we even drew the line at semi-rapids. Um, so you, it's in, probably not so prominent in this country, uh, but in other, in other folks, 25 kilowatt hour chargers are not uncommon. Um, There's a few of them uh, around my way as well. Oh, are there really? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. There's a well, couple it, in the Charge Play Scotland network as well, yeah. but they are there's only a few. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, we decided not to put in the destination chargers for for basically for reasons of clarity and and the and the thought that WhatsApp is a driving assistant. It's an app to help you on your journey, and when you're on your journey, it's a journey charger you need. Um, and there are indeed other apps. I'm not going to name any here, but I'm sure we can all do that. Mm -hmm. um, other apps that have a have the wider gamut of chargers. Uh, and if when you reach your destination, you need somewhere to park your car overnight, then you know th there are other places you can go um, to look at that. And indeed, there's a much wider choice. You know, rapid chargers are rarer, be rarer breeds um, to find, uh, being the more expensive, of course, of all the chargers and obviously slightly heavier on the electricity network. Um, so there are fewer of them around. Um, so it's important that when you need one, um, you can find one. Indeed. Uh, what, what do you feel what, that makes your app stand out from those others that we're not going to mention? Um, I mean, I think, I mean, oh, we clearly are clearly unbiased, of course. And um, I think there's an because because we're not cluttering it with other things. And that's not to say others are mm -hmm. cluttered, but we, you know, because we're not putting in destination chargers, 
or indeed adding other value features. You know, do we do commenting? No, we don't. You know, do we have pictures of the charge points when you get there? No, we don't. Um, could we add them? Sure, we could. But yeah. we went for a cleanness of approach, a simplicity of approach that gives you the information you need, and then you crack on with the rest of your journey. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you, especially if you're using it as a as a driving companion, um, with it on the dashboard, you just want to see the information you need and then concentrate back on the road again. And so that simplicity of approach, we we feel is one of our strengths. Uh, just one or two taps, um, and you find what you need, and then you 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 go on your way. We try to be as automated as we can, so we only we'll only show you charge points that are compatible with your vehicle. Um, and uh, if coming soon, and we'll perhaps talk about some coming soon features a bit later on. Yeah. Um, but you know things like filtering, uh, so charge points that belong to a network that you're a member of, for example. Yeah. Uh, rather than seeing all the charge points. Now, depending where you live, there might not be a charge point for 20 miles. But depending where you live, there might be 400 charge points within 20 miles. And so being able to sift that um, can be it can be helpful. Yeah, because information overload sometimes can be a, a little bit uh, dominant when you're in those areas where there's a million charges. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And you know, from yeah. a from, from a development point of view, um, you know, you, I try to create something that's generic because the more times you try to account for a use case, um, yeah. the more challenges you have to maintain that. And clearly in areas like you know, London, for example, where the charger density is super high, yeah. you know, do, do we want to do something special for high density areas? But if you're up in the northwest of Scotland, where there really might not be a charger for 20, 30 miles, which I mean, it, it sounds a small distance these days, but um, you know, time back well, in four was, or five years, a, it's, yeah, you, yeah, you'd be traveling a long, a lot long, a lot longer away than that. And I think there are still parts in perhaps in Wales that you know don't have the investment in the charging network that we see in other places. Yeah. So, um, you know, we try to be as generic as we can be, uh, but that comes with compromises, you know, uh, to to cope with the extreme rural locations, but also the high density inner city areas. Yeah, I mean, I, you see it a lot on tech forums and things where people are talking about an app and you invariably get a huge line of requests saying, can't you just have this and enable it with a toggle switch? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but as you say, you end up with all these very specific use cases and, and it becomes a lot less user friendly. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's, and, it, and it's hard because you know, we, we we want to be responsive and, you know, sometimes to say to someone, actually, thanks for your idea, but I don't think we're going to take that one forward uh, can be can be difficult because we could do it. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, we, we've got our own passion for what this what the app, the app should be. Uh, and we want to we want to remain true to that. Yeah, I'm, I mean, for just for, for people that don't know, I mean, there are obviously we live in our little bubbles of vlogging and, and YouTube channels where everybody knows everything. But yeah. just give us a, I mean, what what do you feel was the the ethos, if you like? I mean, I know you talked about the what gave you the idea of setting the app up, but why specifically did you go down the route that, that you went down with it rather than the more traditional route planning type of app? Um, what, what kind of pushed you down this direction specifically? Um, part of it, so the app came out first on iOS, uh, much to the annoyance of half the mobile phone owning public um, in the UK. <laughs> no, I thought it was going to be that's fine. Um, and, you know, and so part part of the of the way the app developed was based on the feature set available in iOS. Um, and so, uh, you know, to take advantage of some of the things that kept costs low, you know, map yep. lookups are not, you know, have, have costs associated yep. with them and routing has costs associated with it. Um, I, and also, you know, what features would iOS give us for rapid development uh, within yep. that too? Uh, and so the fact that, you know, Apple Maps has, uh, offers routing straight away um, it was, was a great leg up for us. Yeah. And, you know, things like nearest charger, um, where you get your you know 20 or so nearest chargers in, in the nearest 10 miles was, a, was, a, was an easy win for us and um, when I first got my leaf I quite naively you know I clicked the blue button that says here's the rings that say how yeah. far you can drive well yes if I had a helicopter version of the leaf 
I certainly <laughs> could, because it's as the crow flies. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't drive as the crow flies. Um, now, I have a very, well, it's not a unique case, but where I, where I live next to a river, and across the river is more land where, with chargers on it. Uh, and so my nearest charger, as the crow flies, is six, six miles away. Um, or at least it was when we built the app. However, it will take you 18 miles to drive to it because <laughs> you have to yeah. go down the river, cross the bridge, and then it <laughs> yeah. head over to the, the head back to the charger again. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of the in-car navigation systems, certainly the early ones, um, that was how the that was how uh, offered your Can I just apologise for this? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'm used to any any interview with anybody around Scotland ends up with a cat in it. We had well, elves cat cats taking well, taking flight to place at the EBA I, Scotland. <laughs> I, I have two cats, so um, I shall try to up your one cat <laughs> <laughs> and see if I can get any of them to uh, to appear. <laughs> so, so one one of the you know the, the the early day car navigation systems told you your nearest car was at the crow flies, but when you yep. when you're low on charge, every mile counts. So if your battery says I've got ten miles, even if you have got a gasometer. Uh, then you, know, you want to find a charger in less than that. And so your routing has to be mile accurate. And so that was one of the key things we put in um, from the very beginning was mile accurate routing. Uh, so that as you were looking for your charger, you really find it. <laughs> there needs, there needs, there needs some food perhaps. <laughs> What's to be on Children and animals. <laughs> Brilliant. But you, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I've I've had that experience as well. I, there was a, in the early days when I was uh, I had a, I borrowed a Tesla and there was a supercharger and the navigation told me I could get to the supercharger in about 15 miles. What it hadn't told me it was on a road which is actually inaccessible from the road I was on. So I actually had to go all the way down the end of the road, turn around about and come back up to be able to get to it. Yeah. Um, and and that that was scary. And, yeah. and that's one thing I really do like about your app. I mean, you have now got it on Android, haven't you? So we do, <laughs> yeah. So a special shout out to Scottish Power Energy Networks, who provided the funding uh, for the Android development version of that um, and supported that through the Green Economy Fund, uh, which is a fund designed to promote um, a low carbon economy technologies. Uh, so just a wee shout out to uh, Scottish Power Energy Networks for that. Thank you. <laughs> but yes, we're now on Android. Enough. And... Of course, now we're playing the feature game because occasionally Android gets a feature ahead of iOS and occasionally iOS gets a feature ahead of Android. So Android's currently winning uh, <laughs> yes. with Discovery Mode, uh, yeah. which is anxiously awaited on iOS, I know. Mm. Um, so we're looking forward to, to bringing Discovery Mode soon along with, a, along with a few other features. But yes, it's great to have it on both platforms. Uh, the sad demise of Windows Media um, a device has made things a bit easier, so we don't have to deal with uh, <laughs> that technology anymore. Uh, but it, it wasn't; it was on the cards in the very early days. Yeah. Uh, but oh, yes, oh. Android and iOS, and the both under active development, uh, which is great because we, we, you know, we want to keep going. Excellent. So uh, you talked about discovery mode, which I think that's a paid feature, isn't it? Um, it is, yeah. So give us a bit. I mean. Your normal interface is basically you, you, you want to you select a destination. It gives you a list of of, of charges on route, and then as you're driving along, you get all the charges that are upcoming. Which I, I love that feature. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and you don't even have to be driving on a route. No. Um, you 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 just have to be driving around, and and tr uh, charge points will come and go, um, so that you know you can opportunistically think. Actually, I wasn't going to charge, but I see there's a charger nearby. I see that it's available. I think I'll just go in. Just now. I'm a bit early for my journey. I'll just mm. pop in um, and take a charge, and it allows for that more opportunistic uh, charging. Um, I used to, I used to think that nobody uses sat nav for their commute and for their daily journey um, uh, until my wife told me she uses it every day. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow! Just because because of, because it gives you good ETA on your journey, yeah. um, and because she's coping with Edinburgh traffic um, in the morning, and that you know and the swings and roundabouts quite literally of of how that works that actually folks using uh what's up even when they know where they're going um is, is a really common feature um, and yeah. because they just just it's just good to be aware of what charges are around what's what's online what's busy what's broken uh, so that even yeah. they can begin to plan their their, their journey so that, you mentioned that, that's something I, sorry I, that was something yeah. i wanted to bring into it actually was one of the things that really impressed me early on with your app was that you had that live data on, particularly for me, 
Charles yeah. Plays Scotland, yeah. which nobody else seemed to have at the time. And yeah. kudos to you for pinning it down, however you did. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that makes such a big difference, I think. Um, and presumably, being a poor, unloved iOS user, um, <laughs> Discovery Mode makes good use of that. But um, it is very, very useful when you can see how many charges are around you to be able to then go which one's got stalls available. Um, but obviously, there's there's a few missing networks at the moment. I'm not going to name names. But there are, but you just have to download the app to find out who they are. <laughs> exactly, and you know, and there's some of the some of the either the bigger players or players that want to be the bigger players. Um, what do you think's holding them back from providing that data to people like yourself? Um, I mean, it, it, clearly we've approached them all on several occasions to try and. Um, get hold of that data and you know and we've had responses and I, and I can't go into the, the detail of those responses oh, yeah. but I think there's a sense that um you know some companies might feel that they're you know they want they've invested strongly in their network um and they feel that's a very big proprietary element of their brand uh, and that using their own app and their own functionality will give the users the best experience in their view <laughs> um, and so hello <laughs> Are you hungry, little pusscat? <laughs> Charge somebody. No, please <laughs> shut up. So, so, so they feel their app will give their you their customers the best product and the best experience. And okay, fair 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 play to that. But I think there is a there is a wider um, view that you know if if people don't know your app your charge point is available, they might not go there. You know, so yeah. if if you're driving around and you see two green dots and two grey dots you're going to go for the green dots because Absolutely. you know they're definitely available uh, as opposed to the unknown so I think you know hopefully in time there'll be a sense of you know a, a latitude a relaxing of some of those uh, strongly held opinions just to yeah. benefit the driver and I think they will be of benefit to all those um, who who operate charge point networks too because it's just you, we're actually we're promoting more charge points um, as available and please come and charge there yeah. who yeah. wouldn't want that Exactly. exactly it's definitely one of my favorite features that you've actually got i mean you've definitely got some people that nobody else has got as well which is really good so so i mean I, I credit to my colleague mike who works really hard on the relationships and the contracts and uh, that we put in place to just to service those um so uh and, and you know as new charge points come and go and in, you know there are charge point manufacturers coming in almost every month now yeah mike was telling me just today over 100 new rapid chargers in july alone just incredible growth, really, yeah. really is. Yeah, I've, I've been talking to a lot of the charge, uh, charge, charge manufacturers and, and suppliers of, of, of the equipment, and and the numbers they're actually pushing out at the moment just unbelievable. But, I mean, virtually always just hung up on the DNOs doing the connections to actually get them actually installed. Yeah, but, yeah, sure. yeah it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. So one of the things I, I love about your the app is is the fact that you've got all these nice, very clear UX and you actually show who owns the charges, which I think is nobody else I know does that so clearly, which I think is really good. Although I do, do sometimes struggle to work out which logo is which, but <laughs> that's more about <laughs> logos than your well, you, you can You can tap any charge point and get the slide up, which shows you the details yeah. of the address and the and further details on it. Yeah, I mean, it's a labour of love doing that, I have to tell you, um, just from a just from a design point of view and creating all the variations for that. But it, it is super helpful. Um, now, it, you know, for a while in Scotland, you know, we were blessed with the Charge Play Scotland network, which is by and large ubiquitous and was by and large free um, uh, from from billing. Uh, th those times are passing uh, and, you know, uh, billing for charging is now a, a, a very real thing. But, you know, as as people either join ne card holding networks um, or only have certain features or have contactless available or you know, just like people used to watch the petrol pumps, I'm sure there are folks to keep an eye on the per kilowatt hour pricing. Um, and so, you know, as they drive around, they see Instavolt here, they see um, um, EV Energy there, uh, they see Alpha there, and they can choose accordingly yeah. uh, based on either their purse um, or whatever deals they've got going if they happen to be a card holder and they're paying a monthly subscription or something. So have you, have you thought about actually sharing pricing as you go as well? Because that's something I, I've, I've often thought would be really nice. If, you, if you're approaching three separate charges and you can see that one was 
way cheaper than the other three you might be more tempted to go um, that way. i mean we do we do offer the price uh, but we don't compare them um yeah. so there isn't a kind of a uh, red green um amber a uh, dot that says uh, this is the most expensive and this this isn't um you know ca- caveat emptor uh, <laughs> yeah. to these um but we do we do offer the price and the helpline number and contactless and yeah. there, are, there are taxi features too if you're a taxi driver and we normally hide the taxi only points because um, drivers like you and I can't rock up there. Yep. But if you're a taxi driver, you can show them so that you have even more options uh, for charging um, that uh, you know, that regular drivers don't get. And you know, we'll look to add other features. You know, it, will reservations ever become a thing? That, that that's interesting to know, interesting to think about. Mm. You know, and so perhaps if if it does become a thing, you know, in WhatsApp as you approach, you can reserve, uh, you can reserve your spot uh, so that you can drive in. Uh, and charge as you go, but that's not here yet, so it's uh, it's maybe on the horizon. Uh, but we're you know we're keeping an eye out for those things. Uh, technologies like Fastnet have for auto charge. You just plug your car in, and yeah. your your build automatically. Um, My favourite you know, feature. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and, it is awesome. You know we need to get some of the technologies to catch up. Um, I think there's something of a fragmented landscape with you know manufacturers um, with um, charge point owners um i think europe is doing some things better um if that's not an ugly thing to say these days um and you know over here i think we're we're we in a wee small corner and i think a lot a lot of the charging networks could do a bit more of interoperability shall we say there is Absolutely. another word for it but i'll not use it yet because it causes <laughs> some anxiety with folks <laughs> um yeah i mean in terms of that, that pricing that, that you do provide, which is, again, it's a brilliant little feature, because um, obviously it's not as simple as, as, I mean, Gary and I have discussed this on many occasions in the past, but it's, it's not as simple as we feel it should be, where there's one price and that's what you pay. <laughs> you know, you rock up and depending on how you choose to pay, you, you know, you can have a massive range of prices from, you know, 100 percent difference between them. So you, interestingly, your app gives all the prices, well, not all the prices, but a mm-hmm. good range of the yeah, yeah. different prices that are available. Um, it's a great feature, but wh- is that data that you get live from some sort of feed or is it something that's put in as a labour of love? Sadly, you, yeah, sadly, it's the labour of love. Um, right. It really is. And, and I, you know, I have to say that, you know, the, the adding of new charge points is also a labour of love. I mean, a, a lot of providers, including the National Charge Point Registry, do offer feeds of data, but the level of accuracy we've found to be poor sometimes. Um, and so there's nothing there's nothing like doing it yourself. Um, <laughs> and, and I think the quality of our data, you know, th- there are other apps that take user solicited data and mm-hmm. that data can be variable, albeit with the best intentions of those who update it, but there's perhaps a lack of consistency about what am I updating and what, how should I refer to the, what I'm updating. Whereas because we have control of uh, how we're choosing to locate and um, charge points and how we choose to describe them and how we choose to price them, uh, you know, we feel we have that consistency across the app uh, yeah. and that quality of data um, because it, it, it virtually all is hand edited uh, to give us the highest possible level of accuracy. That's super impressive there. then, because no. I, I assumed you were getting some sort of data feed from somewhere with that information. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it is robotic, but his name is Mike. You know, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's that a lot does of all that. <laughs> One of the things we were toying with on pricing, because there are a variety of pricing models, was, you know, if you tell us the size of your battery in your car, or we can, we can by and large work it out from what kind of car you've told us you drive anyway, you know, to, to offer a kind of this is how much it will cost you to fill up your vehicle um, on this charger. Because if you have a if you have a connection charge and a per kilowatt hour charge per minute, per Wednesday, per furlong, <laughs> um, you know, how does that differ from yeah. contactless per kilowatt hour with no connection charge? Uh, or then you've got a minimum charge, which is different from a connection charge. Uh, and how does that affect what you charge if you want to only take a small amount and a large amount? And it's complex. It really is. Yeah. Um, and how can we make that better for the user? Assuming, you know, I mean, ideally, let's get it fixed at source. So let's get the charge point operators having a common type of pricing model. 
uh, but that might be a bigger labour of love than even we can manage. Um, so sadly, how, yeah. how best can we interpret? How best can we interpret that? You know, to give folks um, a, a, a good idea of actually, if I want to uh, put 10 kilowatt hours in my car, how much will that cost me? And are there better ways of doing it? You go to the supermarket and you see, you know, 12 tins of Coke at this price, 24 tins at this price and 13 at this price. But it tells you how much each can costs. Yeah. You know, so you can do a comparison, even though the volumes are different. And perhaps we need to get and, you know, and there's something like that in the electricity and, and gas industry, too, when you're comparing your pricing. I forget what it's called, but there's a common a common standard for that. Yeah, that takes factors in the yeah, exactly. charges and stuff. So, yeah. and you know, do we need something eventually? It's maybe too early in the game at the minute, but you know, it, I think it is difficult for people to compare. And it wouldn't surprise me if the government stepped in one day and said, "I think we need to have a more standardised pricing model." Mm. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. So you mentioned earlier you're, you're looking at adding people's accounts into this system. So you say you've got one of the, the charge point providers accounts, which gives you a discount. You, I guess you could include that in that pricing modelling as well. Well, I suppose we could, yes. Um, so, yeah, we, I mean, we would use that for filtering. So it's, let's say you're a polar customer, I'm a polar yeah. customer. Um, uh, you know, we could you could show only polar chargers and then we would show you what rate you um applies to you based on the card you've told us that you have mm-hmm. um so yeah absolutely uh, we could we could really make that simpler still and potentially um it's a shame we can't talk to the cars um uh, to interrogate their battery status to say look uh, this is how much it's going to cost you to fill up your vehicle and mm-hmm. um, top up your vehicle and um, we can almost talk to the leaf um um but you know it'd be nice to have some standardization um that we can you know query the battery and you know things you know as as your mobile phone and in dash systems begin to co-integrate and um, we might be able to do that in the future you know um things like carplay and android auto let you turn on the air conditioning and the fans and you know you mm. it, you know these dash systems can talk to the car we can talk to these dash systems you know so perhaps we can go a little bit further in time to come to be able to interrogate the car's the car's battery system to be so you, to, you mentioned carplay and android auto there what, what are the plans along those lines because i know it's so um, car, carplay is possibly slightly less challenging than android auto is <laughs> well i understand um, it, 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 te- it technically is yes yeah. so clearly our eye is fixed uh, on both of these um, platforms um android auto is the harder because we can only do what the phone manufacturers offer um and a uh, you know android um doesn't offer independent third party um apps to offer navigation features now you might look oh waze is on there how come yeah, but who owns waze well exactly <laughs> who owns waze and that answers your question and for readers at home you can go and look that up on wikipedia later <laughs> and find out the answer to that question and find out why waze is there and nobody else is yeah. um so you know, we would hope one day that either through antitrust or just general um, uh, goodwill that third party developers like ourselves will be able to access the navigation features. CarPlay is similar. Uh, again, Apple only allows uh, those and such as those access to um, uh, to some of those CarPlay features. Um, the launch of iOS 14 uh, with its EV specific app category is very exciting to us. And all I'll say is watch this space. Oh, oh! <laughs> I'm have to go and get an iPhone if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no bad Gary, thing. Steady. <laughs> Never thought I'd hear those words. <laughs> It'd only be for that. It'd only be for that. I, I have, only for that. Yeah. I, I have a staggering conversion rate of people to Apple products, so you're not. T- <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're outnumbered, mate. How's it going? <laughs> Uh, but but I can still use I can I can still use the other other app which begins what on, on my <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a, we have a confusion of of what's on the on the iPads because we also have another app called WhatCat which is on Android only but uh, specifically okay. the channel I face, which is okay. which is an excellent app yeah. uh, and we may have more more on that later <laughs> yeah um, so you mentioned discovery mode earlier on um, and since we're in an Android iOS discussion. <laughs> Um, any ideas on a timescale for that for iOS? Is there... um, it's um, I I have it running uh, <laughs> on my phone. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, we've got a couple of last niggles just to sort out um, to do with 
a just in tilt mode um showing the um the 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 geometry and the geography of where the charge points are. Um, right, yeah. I, in, until I went into um, doing mapping on apps, I never realised how much my high school geometry would come to the <laughs> fore. Um, and I'm also an astronomer by degree. And oh, so wow. um, spherical geometry um, is also a key element of being able to place access points in thin air in terms of <laughs> coordinate spaces. And uh, without boring you too much, um, the, the mapping provider uh, the map interface itself and the phone all have different coordinate systems which require to be translated between and then the latitude and longitude of the earth of where the charge point actually is on the planet gets phased into that so there's a complexity there so you're saying it is rocket science huh? <laughs> just about, actually just about not short of it anyway um so it's it, that that just takes time um just to get just to get right um and uh, you know whilst we can you know my colleague who works on the android version you know we can share some levels of code um, but the way the ios devices and the android devices describe their coordinate systems are radically different um, i don't know all about that there's, there's, there's no copy paste uh, that we can easily do that we share code for a lot of other areas right very challenging <laughs> indeed so have you got any other other features coming up i mean we talked about discovery mode. so actually but before i move on to other features discovery mode is a subscription service what do people have to pay for that uh, on android i think it's 99 pence a month um so, and and i think ios wouldn't be too different it'll have to be the same or people will be upset <laughs> um, I, so, I, I, I think i think that's well worth it to be honest yeah, so it's, it's, if it's, it's not the really same surprised. there'll be a there'll be a war <laughs> yeah, or or you could make it cheaper because we've had to wait. But <laughs> so so yes, yeah, so new features. So new well, filtering, uh, you know, is one of the one of the next things, and not not just on charge point network, um, but also on a uh, charge point power. So, okay. You know, so as we see higher powered chargers coming to the fore, uh, that for those for those cars that can cope with it, and would rather. Um, only see chargers that can deliver 100 kilowatts and above, for example. Uh, then you can filter by um, uh, by charge point power. You can filter by payment system. So if you've only got a, if you only got a debit card on you, you know I don't want to see any um, networks where I have to have a, an app or a card or something. Yeah. Um, and I think there'll be filtering a few more filters based on distance. Um, and a few other categories that I'll need to, to try and remember one day. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I, don't, I don't even know what that was. <laughs> uh, it's um, I guess our, um, our, our next most requested feature um, is waypoints. Uh, yes. um, so uh, currently we go from A to B and only A to B. Yeah. Uh, but for those of you who want to, you know, either break up your journey uh, or just go a different way, because we, you know, we, we choose the the mapping. The, you, you get offered three routes, but if you don't fancy any of those three routes and you want to go a different way, you'd actually have to enter that journey in twice effectively. Uh, yeah. So waypoints is is one of the next one of the big features yeah, too. I'm definitely looking forward to that. <laughs> and and we want to also just improve our um our live status availability on chargers. Mm -hmm. So um, increasingly newer chargers and especially those that are high powered will cope with charging multiple vehicles simultaneously. So uh, many will do AC DC simultaneously. Yeah, but yeah of course. Yeah. Will, newer ones will do dc dc simultaneously uh, yes yeah. so yeah. What, what we'd like to show is that um if if you're approaching in a ccs vehicle and the chadamo is in use then that's that's charger still available for you indeed yeah currently we don't have that granular level of a uh, definition because we also need to know what manufacturer is of a charge point at a particular location Indeed, uh, and that takes some fact finding to do that. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's not the network, is it? It's actually the physical yeah. manufacturer. It's the actual yeah. machine itself. So, yeah. so, so we, but we do want to get to a point because you know, if if a single charger unit can charge three cars simultaneously, let's celebrate that. Let's <laughs> let's drive yeah. cars, no pun intended, um, <laughs> to to that charger, so that it can be used to its maximum point. 
uh, rather than saying, oh, it's in use when actually it could be used by a different type of vehicle. And because we know the connector you have, we can either say, OK, you've got a Chadimo car and it's a Chadimo car that's charging, so you need to find someone else. Or you're a CCS car, on you go, fire in, it's available to you. Yeah, I mean, there's not many of those around at the moment, but they are they are coming and they're, they I think coming. they're going to become quite prevalent once they actually, you know, once they establish a foothold. Yeah, I think I think going forward, we're going to see a lot of them being installed. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Well, Neil, thanks so much for your time tonight. It's been oh, not fantastic. At all. Fantastic, and uh, it's a great app, and I, I think going Thank straight so strength to strength. And uh, I know I see, I see very regularly on the iPace forums people singing its praises. So uh, I, I can't wait for the CarPlay integration. Really can't wait for Android Auto, but I'm sure that's <laughs> Sorry. Right. Sorry. a lot more chance. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so so, so th again, thanks ever so much, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll let you get on with your evening. But uh, it's been a, a real pleasure. Absolute so privilege much. to speak to you. Thanks for joining Thank us, Neil. So Cheers, then. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye. <laughs> Well, that was that was a fantastic interview, wasn't it? I, I mean, great app and and yeah, great app and, and really interesting guy to chat to as well. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's good stuff. And, and also, uh, we did mention quite a bit in that that conversation the eBay Scotland interview interview I did, which, uh, despite a few audio issues with the the recording, is still really interesting to listen to. And there's some great information there, stuff I just did not know. Yeah, <laughs> well, we know all about audio problems tonight, don't we, Cat? <laughs> the cat, yes, indeed. <laughs> He, he's been um, the star of the show so far, so <laughs> he's, he's certainly still in the limelight. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll he'll probably, he'll probably be back back in a little while, but uh, yeah. we'll see. But yeah, that that EVA Scotland interview was was uh, really interesting. Actually, obviously, has a, a certain relevance for me, yeah. um, and I am an EVA Scotland member as well. But um, but interesting to to hear them chat to you about everything that goes on behind the scenes and yeah. some of the technicalities that people don't understand when they, you know, they think, well, surely you, there's electricity everywhere. You just turn up, plug your charger in, and and that's it. You can't and you sort of think challenges like earthing in a in a in a get petrol station. How do you handle that? That, that was that was really exactly the one which is a good segue. Yeah. into the news indeed we've got lots of news tonight and and we're talking about services as one of the, the big big things so we'll come on to that in a little while but first thing yep. i think we ought to really talk about is we have, since the last time we've, we've been on we've had model year 21 announcements indeed and there are a few changes in model year 21 there are um some minor some not so minor <laughs> So I, I guess the biggest change is that the infotainment system is changing. Um, yep. That, although some may argue one of the, the other changes is the biggest change, but we'll come on to that in a second. But the, Indeed, so yeah. this, this is going to be the, the second implementation of PV Pro in, in the JLO group. But I think the first implementa implementation in Jaguar. Um, so PV Pro is, yep. for people who don't know, is the replacement for the Touch Pro Duo um, system we have in our, in our current it's, iPaces. It's, it's the physical hardware of basically the touch screen, the, all the touch screens, yeah. and, and the software that drives them and, and the processors that drive them. And, and the critical thing with PV Pro is it's a much faster processor, so it can cope with all the stuff it needs exactly. to cope. I don't think, I mean, interface-wise, it is different. But functionality-wise, yep. I don't think it's going to be hugely different from what we've got yeah. now in terms of what's in there. Um, I'm hoping to line up a, 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 when, once the first Model Year 21 uh, cars hit the dealers, I've, I'm hoping to line up a look at PV Pro in its full glory with all the, all the EV features in there. Yeah, I'm trying to do the same. I, I understand. <laughs> so they, they've got them all. But, yep. but it has some nice, fit, nice uh, online feature, um, abilities. Um, back end stuff which is changing so dynamic routing based on charger availability and all that, that good stuff will be hopefully in in that yeah again wait so are they, are they moving away from here i haven't actually heard the, the answer to that um i still think it's here maps behind, yeah, well, at least that. the, the mapping behind the scenes whether it's actually here providing exactly, yeah. service, i don't know um, but the, it, the lack it, of announcement on it makes me assume that there's, there's yeah, no change. Yeah. But. And, and, and to be honest, I think more details will come out on that, that as it get closer to the Indeed. date, because I, I suspect that, that um, it, some of this is still under development and the EV part of it probably didn't actually need to be ready for the, the launch date. And the announcement. Exactly. Yeah. And we, and we know that um, there's been some videos in the last couple of weeks of people actually having problems with PV Pro on the on the on the uh, Jaguar, on the Land Rover. Sorry. Um, yeah, so, I've seen that. So, so some some rough edges on that. So uh, it's it, software. 
it is software and we all know all about that so it, it, it's uh, I think, but it's great to see that they've actually taken the, the, the decision to put that into the new iPace because I, I understand that was a very last minute decision it was very touch and go with it. that was actually going to go in the new iPace this year yeah uh, for this year. and it's good to see it's coming because that's one of the things people do complain about I mean it must be I suspect uh, that's why it was pushed through so yeah. so heavily is yeah. that almost every review you ever read it yeah. gets a mention it's never in the early days it was quite a strong mention now it's more of an afterthought of mm, the infotainment could be a bit speedier because yeah. they have refined it and they have improved oh, yeah, it have. With, with updates. I mean, we, we, we discussed this before. I mean, I, I don't yep. struggle with it at all now. I think it's, it's, no, it's, I think it's perfectly fine. fine now. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I've, also, I, I mean, I've been doing quite a few calls with new new iPace owners the last few weeks, especially some of the people in the NHS. And and general opinion I get from most people is, what's the fuss about with this? Yeah, exactly. Effort? It's just, but, it's fine. but had they been around for the early days, they may have, they may have. Yeah, had other, other, other opinions, yes. Yeah. So, so I think that's 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 really good. Um, along with that comes the new um, camera system, which I think you, you 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 had, had a look. Did you have a look at this in in the Defender? I did, yes. Um, and it's 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 good, but I I feel it's. How shall I say this? It's something that all your friends will look at and go, wow, that's impressive. But in terms of actual day-to-day use, I kind of I, I kind of feel that the top-down view, we're talking about the 360 camera yeah. here. Um, the top-down view that we currently get is actually more precise. If you're using it to maneuver up to a curb, for example, or or, mm-hmm. or something like that, the top-down view is actually, I find, a little more um, precise, shall we say, you know, where, whereby you can easily at a glance see exactly what's going on around you rather than having to swipe the screen around so that you're looking at it from the right angle. Yeah. Um, you know, it looks very impressive, and there are cases where it would be incredibly useful as well. It's but very I, dis- I, difficult to describe in words actually how it looks, isn't it? It's, it's, it's one of these... I know. I I always try and uh, when people talk to me about it, I usually refer to uh, like touch phone games, you know, 3D games on your touch phone where you touch the screen and swipe it round and your character stays in the middle and the view rotates and as you as you move your fingers around the screen. And that's basically what it is. It gives you this magical view of your car like yours behind you now. Yeah. With everything that there is around it. And you can swipe the screen and spin it all around in 3D. It looks incredibly stunning. It's very smooth as well. Um, but um, but yeah, for me, I I I have to say that I I find the old top down 360 view. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'd, be, I'd be really happy with the the top down 360 view we've got now if the front of it was a bit better, more accurate. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and and that's got to be tweakable in software some along the lines. I was having this discussion with some of the engineers not not so long ago because it, it yeah it, it's fun. It's the floor it, the, the the distortion on it is consistent. So they must exactly. Be, so all you have to do is consistently adjust that distortion. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. It sounds like that it should be the same. Okay, so so Pivi Pro is yep. one of the big the big features in Body Year Twenty One. Yep. The other really big feature, and I think for our European. Uh, watches this is huge is the inclusion of 22 kilowatt ac charging at three phase yeah uh, in the car, the car. so um, is it 22 uh, sorry 11 kilowatt i keep yeah sorry i thought i got it you're, wrong you're, you're right second. you're right to correct me because this is what way well i was actually thinking it's not 22 this, it, people want yeah. 22 they wanted 22 but they can't do that because and i'm told that's to do with the the actual packaging of the, of the, the packaging year. within the car yeah. yeah there's not enough room to put, put and there didn't actually used to be a room to put 11 kilowatt three phase in there um yeah that it's only because technology's moved on and then there's new newer modules available they can actually put that in there so yeah. and, and, and this is shuffling around done, done to do that in the wiring harnesses on. i haven't seen the full details but i'm sure that's that it, but, it, but it sounds like it's a, it's a relatively minor change to fit that in but a, but a huge benefit to our european friends because at the moment they really struggle to charge their cars overnight if you if you're trying to fill yeah. up an ipad overnight on a, on a what effectively is three kilowatt 
you're not going to get very far. So basically, with their granny charging off a wall box, which is yeah, they are. Yeah, they know. are. So, so, so I think that's that's huge that they've got that, and and, it, and it's nice as well for people in the UK who are going to be able to use some destination charges to Indeed, top, yeah. up, top up a bit quicker. Um, so, so yeah, so all round, I think that's 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 a good thing. Definitely. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think what other uh, news we had. I mean, there's been some tweaks to the what's available well, standard spec. The, yeah, indeed. There's the ClearSight rearview mirror. Oh, of course, yeah, ClearSight. I forgot, almost forgot Which that. is an option. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, if you look at Gary's car over his shoulder there, um, <laughs> the little shark fin on the on the top of the roof there at the back, uh, optionally, I believe it's an option on all models. Is it standard on the HSE? I think it's standard on the high model, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, within that shark fin at the back, there's a little camera now. Yeah. And the rear view mirror has a switch on it where you can switch it to mirror mode or camera mode. Yeah. And basically, you can use the rear view mirror with the feed from that camera going into it. So if you've, if you either just got, you know, if you feel the rear visibility isn't good enough for you, which a lot of people do, or, um, you know, if you just prefer it, you can you can switch to that view now, or if you've loaded the back up with stuff and the window's blocked, you can get your rear view mirror from that feed on the top of the yeah. uh, the rear roof of the car. So one of the things I, I found quite interesting reading the spec on that was it actually says this is not advised for people with multifocal lenses or bifocal lenses, so which is which yeah. I thought was quite interesting. I've um, also but, heard exactly the same criticism levelled at the. Uh, door mirrors on the Audi e-tron and the Honda e as well yeah yeah and I can see, see why that would be the case because it, it's uh, definitely a, if your eyes can't adjust because you haven't got the point, point exactly of people miss the tech or the I suppose the technicality whereby a mirror has an infinite focus on it yeah and a camera doesn't yes. <laughs> so you're yeah. focusing on the image where in yeah. a mirror you're focusing on the reflection Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that, but at least you can always turn it off anyway. So you've yeah, exactly, got, yeah. got the, uh, the option. Um, so I think that, that's that's the, the there's quite a few um, tweaks to the look and look of the car um, in terms yeah. of minor tweaks. But there's there's a change. Minor the cosmetics. Look, minor cosmetics, but quite a nice ones. Some of them. The the front yeah. grille's got these highlights on them, which makes it look kind of sparkly. Um, Indeed. But if you don't like sparkle, you can actually have an a blackout mode now which blackout, blacks out, yeah yeah blackouts blacks out the logos and you can even have a no logo um option as well which i thought was indeed was, yeah it's quite interesting um big changes on the lower models um there's, there's more yep. standard features on the lower models to start start um 19 inch wheels available um and i, I saw you having a discussion with someone on the iPlace forums about that the other day yeah um, yeah someone was asking for some advice as to what would be the best um, yeah. And my personal feeling, the, the opinion I stated at the time really was when you start getting into the difference between 19s and 20s, it's going to be such a minor difference that mm. go with what you like, go with what you think looks best on the car. Because like the difference from the 18s to the 20s or more importantly, the 18s to the 22s, you know, Which, that makes yeah. a, a massive impact on range. Well, I say massive, but a significant impact on range. Where I've gone from a 19 to a 20 or a 20 to a 19, five or yeah. six miles extra, you know, are you going to lose sleep? Yeah, yeah. I, and, and, that, and that's, but so for some people that may be enough to Indeed, make it yeah. a, 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 a car which they can actually use. And I, I quite I quite like the idea of 19s because I think 18s always looked really odd on the car, whereas yeah. 19s probably won't look as odd, odd on the car, but will give some benefit. Um, exactly. They'll fill the arches and start a bit better. Yeah, yeah. and um, they'll be a bit more rubber on them, so potentially the vibe quality might be slightly better if, yeah. on, on steel springs, so if you haven't got air on, on, on yeah. the standard. So, um, but yeah, so I think the the the, the interesting um things really are, are, are those those small changes in the features but the fact that we've got some of these bits and pieces now standard in in the the base models and and a lot more things standard in the hse i mean for example the heads-up display is now standard in yeah the HSC, which is an option in fact my i i, I spec'd out the equivalent of my car and it would have came come in a, a, about a, about three or four thousand pound cheaper than it, it did when i bought it because all these things are now standard which i added as options yeah um, which is which is good 
but strangely, when I I pray stop, we we obviously we were on the same mission the other day. Yeah. Um, I pray stop to basically build an equivalent to a uh, first edition. Yeah, and that worked out to be significantly more than paying for the first edition yes. at the time. Yeah, but even allowing for even allowing for inflation since then. That's because you have to pay fifty pound pound for the cover for the um, cover holders. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. It was fifty pounds extra, <laughs> which, which is crazy uh, and and yeah. very confusing in the configurator. I think a lot of people will look at that and think they actually have to pay for the cup holders for course. the cup holders. And it's just, I mean, for those that don't know, I wish I had it with me to actually show yeah. you. But there's a little flat cover that goes over the top of the cup holders on the eye piece, yeah. and it's de- it, it's not a slide back lid or anything. You just lift it off and put it yeah. in the centre console. Um, that cover is a fifty pounds option now. Um, I've never used it. Have you? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I did um, use it. To, I did use it to start with, but now now I could sort of plug. I use my, that area for my phone. I've just tucked exactly away. Exactly. Same here. So if anybody wants to buy one for fifty pound, I mean, there's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I th- what I think I think one person I saw made a, a comment on the IPS forums, which I think was, I think he nailed it to be honest with that particular decision, is it gives a cheap simple thing that the dealers can throw in as a sort of gesture of goodwill. Yes, oh, well, yeah. they're supposed to be 50 quid extra, but I'll give you the cup holder cover free. Yeah, that's what I say. Um, talk about things are thrown, which are thrown in. In the, We mentioned the, the um, heads-up display. One of the things I thought was very interesting is that the, it appears the base model iPace now has the 360-degree camera. Yeah. Which, which is definitely an improvement over the, the current um, version. Um, and there, there seemed to become, I, I couldn't remember the cruise control on the S, the current S. Is that is that does that include the speed limited bit or um, not? Oh, I thought you were going to go for the adaptive bit. The adaptive, speed limited. The, yeah, well, it's only the, the, the adaptive speed limiter because the, 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 I, 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 I know it doesn't have adaptive cruise control, but I didn't. Know yeah, that that's what I that's what I thought you were going yeah. for. Sorry. Um, Ooh, the adaptive speed limiter. No, that's a good. Qu- no, I think that was standard. I think that was standard. Okay, okay, okay. so but it's definitely standard now on the new model. So yeah, but, but it's a few things which have been added to the base model, yeah. which just brings it up to, up to a bit more. I mean, obviously we've always talked about this. The base model is, is the same car as the high model. It's, it's just the options which have been added onto it. Um, exactly. Other than, other the fact that it doesn't, it comes to coils rather than air a standard. That that's the. But it, but it's. I mean, it's nice to see that starting to come in. It's, it's uh, yeah, definitely improvement so good stuff so is, uh, is there anything else that I, i'm trying to think what else i, I saw on, on because basically it's the same car other than it's those, exactly the same car other than the fact that the pivi pro replaces the touch pro duo and it should be stressed the physical appearance is exactly the same there's no yeah. change to the screen sizes the layout you know where everything is in the car so as far as a customer looking at it is concerned apart from the slightly different graphics yeah um there's no actual change to the physical interior of the car it fits into the same uh slots if you like as, as the old touch pro duo did yeah yeah and look and, and, it, and it doesn't actually look too dissimilar in terms of i mean no. things like things like your heating controls look, look the same as they did previously so exactly uh, obviously we'll have to wait to see that when it comes out okay Indeed, so, yeah. so, that's, so that's model year 21 which i think it is nice to see. I mean, it's really nice to see there has been some improvements. It's it, yeah. uh, it's one of those questions. Would you wait for a model year twenty one now if you if you if you had the choice? Um, I would reserve judgment till I've used the Pivi Pro, if I'm honest, yeah. because looking at the gra- uh, the uh, videos I've seen of it, and I've only seen it on video so far, um, the some of the layout options in the Touch Pro Duo I prefer. Like I I like the way I've got my home screen. Mm. customized on the touch pro duo and while you can do home screen touch home screen customization on the pivi pro it's not quite as much uh in the way of flexibility as there is on the touch yeah. pro duo for example yeah i think the only thing on the pivi pro i, I do I, I i would prefer over what we currently got is, is the shortcut buttons being available even when you're in things like android auto and apple carplay that is an absolutely brilliant function and it's one of the things that makes me use carplay less at the moment mm-hmm. is that if i want to switch to that 360 camera mm-hmm. it's three button pre- four button presses and fight yeah. to get into it yeah yeah um, so i think that that's that's something which 
is is really good, and they, they've done it without real real loss of li- real estate on the screen. Yeah, so it's just using exactly. Border area, so so that's good. Okay, so let's move on from that. Um, I've also yep. had the longest show in history, <laughs> as is always the way. We're always breaking records here. <laughs> so we talked about charging. Uh, we were talking yes. about. So we've had some interesting news, of, particularly over the last couple of days, uh, around Indeed. motorway services. Um, so. Ecotricity and Tesla seem to have joined forces and are putting in loads of planning applications for loads of uh, of the services. So, yep. I mean, there's quite a few of them been mentioned, but the one which inter- in- intrigued me because it's obviously on my route, the thorough uh, yep. services. Um, yep. They're now talking about, I think it's 20, uh, 18 Tesla chargers and 10 Ecotricity chargers. Yeah. And these aren't your grandfather's Ecotricities. <laughs> These, these yeah, indeed not, these are they appear to be ccs only from what i've seen in the pictures that they've been putting out the um, pictures is, that they've shown were ccs only now yeah. remains to be seen whether the final version because those chargers can be purchased with a, a chargeable okay. connector as well they can be, they can be and and, and potentially they can also do that dual charge thing which is we were talking about earlier um so but, but these are tritium charges which is Yep. One of the more reliable makes. So our friends at Instavolt use these all the time. So it'd be interesting to see if that remains the case once they're in eco <laughs> but uh... Well, they obviously need maintenance, which may be a, may be a question. But the yeah. um, but actually the, the charges themselves are incredibly reliable and, and they are yeah. re- relatively easy to use and uh, do yeah. support contactless. So hopefully Indeed. contactless payment will become part of the ecosystem thing. Now, I th- I suspect this is actually taking advantage of the new government funding, which actually one of the criteria for that is that they had to have contactless payment on. Exactly. So I think that'd be good. I mean, that actually, that government funding does mention that it has to be available for all, all electric vehicles. So, um, but the argument, I, the argument I've been hearing is that this is not replacing existing ecotricity charges. This is all additional charges. So the current CHAdeMO enable charges will still be there and the yeah ac the high powered ac charges will still be there as well um okay so yeah that's a that's an interesting one in saying right yeah. but this i mean this just looks really good now the other thing we heard a few weeks ago on this is uh western power um who are the power the distributed from my area and the, the yep. Midlands and go up quite a way towards you um the dno I have been doing some experimentation with chargers to make them easier to install. <laughs> and our friend is back. <laughs> Hello. It's been a while. We missed you terribly. <laughs> You're still not going out. Go away. Anyway, yes. Yeah. So, Western so, they, so West, they've been doing some experimentation uh, with the idea of making it easier to install chargers at, at particularly at services, but a modular approach to it. And what they're doing, is they're, yep. one of these experiments they're doing is, is at Exeter, Exeter, Exeter services, which have been a bit of a black hole for charging and very unreliable, um, where they're actually proposing, I think it's over the next year, to put 40 charges in as a trial. 40. So that would be an interesting approach. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, have they, I mean, what scale are we talking about? What power, what... Well, they, they talk talk about high power charges, so uh, I, I, guess, I guess they've got to be at least 50s. Um, and I'd be surprised if they weren't up to 150, because that's what they've talked about as their sort of base. Yeah, base well, of, uh, there must be some really big substations in that district. <laughs> <laughs> but they, 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 I think they're talking about uh, load management and charge management. So I mean, yeah. if you think about it, you've got 40 charges, and they're not all going to be in use all the time at the same time. Exactly. So. There's going to be certain peak periods where yeah. Yeah. a big number of them are, are in use. And, and ultimately, you need to get to a point where all your charges are never in use, yeah. because ultimately, we need to get to a point where you're not rocking up at a charge and having to wait 40 minutes for somebody else to finish yeah. before you then plug in for 40 minutes. <laughs> I've had this conversation, conversation quite a few times in the last few weeks about whether we actually are at sufficient infrastructure already once the longer term, longer range cars come in. So once, once See, before, I have to say no. And the only reason I say I understand why you would say that. and I understand that discussion. But if you look at the number of car companies now that are coming out with EVs with 120 mile ranges. Yeah. It's there's so many. And the you know the the country is going to be full of them so you know and all of those cars need a, a strong charger network because even though they're 
120 miles, which is more than most people commute in a day, a lot of those people don't won't have home charging. Yeah. Um, a lot of them will need to use them on occasion for longer drives and will have to charge. Like you, you have a 250 mile car, you can do a 120 mile day trip. Yeah. Pushing it, admittedly, but you know, you, you see my point. You yeah. do a 120 mile day trip without charging. Yeah. If you've got a 120 mile car, you can only do a 50 mile day trip without charging. Yeah. You know, and 50 miles isn't that far for a day out. You know, no. a lot of people will do that. So I, I think, well, I see what you're saying, and I understand the argument. And I've heard it put forward by other people as well. I don't think we're anywhere near the infrastructure that we need at the moment and my cat agrees with me <laughs> um for you know for the number of evs that are coming onto the roads within the next 12 months 24 months and i think that's the thing i think we may actually find we, we need to put more charging in infrastructure in now than we actually put that's, in long term um, exactly we need to be running over capacity yeah all the time yeah. otherwise it becomes a self-defeating exercise where people won't buy a car because the infrastructure isn't there. The difficulty with that, and this is obviously where Tesla have got an advantage because they fund their own network, is that if we're over capacity, those people yeah. with charges aren't making any money. And that's where government intervention has to come in. Yeah. Um, and I'm not really always one for government subsidies. I don't think they're necessarily the best way of tackling things at times. But something like this, which is such a fundamental change to the way people drive, the way, you know, the way people buy cars and power their cars, that without government intervention, it's not going to become economically viable for quite some time. Yeah. But it's certainly interesting. I mean, this whole, the whole thing is really good. Now, um, we mentioned, I think, I don't know if we discussed I honestly on the last, last show or not. I can't remember but- I can't remember either, actually. I feel we must have. But. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we've, been talk, we've talked in the past about honesty coming live. Many times. Extra services. And it's actually started to happen. We, we, we've yeah. now got, so in my my area, there's, there's three sets of honesty charges that have come live recently. Some, some you have to pay for, some you don't have to pay money for. So it's, uh, yeah, indeed, yeah. Uh, and uh, as your cat is telling us, we need to tell people how, how, how they can save some money on. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for the reminder, Birkin. Great help. You're such a good help. You're not going out. Right. So. Yes. Um, so, yes. So so we, we, I don't remember if we discussed the, the various ways of Chelsea and Monarchy, but Mine Gal, Main Gal, or however you want to pronounce it, is actually Mine yeah. Gal. Or people say Main Gal because it's easy to work out. You have to spell yeah. the you need to download. Is, is the cheapest per kilowatt charge at the moment. Um, yeah. And actually, got slightly cheaper because they've passed the German government's subsidy on that to the end user. Exactly. Good. And if yep. you're charging up to around about 27 kilowatts, that's the cheapest way to go. So if, if yep. you know you're not going to charge any more than that, put your main card, card my card up against it, and you're going to get charged about eight pound. Yeah. Um, if you're going to go above that, then you need to consider. Um, the best approach and for a while it was charge point but unfortunately that's gone away as a deal sadly uh, yeah mentioned it quite a lot on my videos but that that they 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 pulled out almost as soon as i mentioned it uh, but we yeah. still have got one, well as jaguar drivers we still have got one option which is the jaguar public charging app indeed which is still at the moment fixed fee of eight pound 80 and i have tested it and it definitely works we still we do i used it myself just last week or the week before last week yeah and it works works very well. But you've actually yeah. got a, 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 a fob or a card associated with your version of the yeah, app. Yeah, I have, so yes. I, 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 initially, I was just using the app. Um, I have got – so we should say that Jaguar Public Charging is actually run by a company called Plug Surfing. Um, and there's yeah. a separate plug surfing app, and you can get separate plug surfing fobs and cards, which I have got, but they don't get yeah. the discount because it's only available through the Jaguar Public Charging app. Exactly. And this has caused a lot of confusion. (laughs) It's caused no end of confusion. Basically, what happens is, in mainland Europe, as I understand it, um, when you buy, um, this may have changed, but certainly around about the time I was getting my car, in mainland Europe, if you bought a Jaguar I-Pace, along with the I-Pace, your dealer gave you a Jaguar, either an RFID card, I think it was a key fob, though. Key fob, yeah, I believe it's key fob, yeah. Um, which has the RFID tag in it 
for the Jaguar plug surfing or Jaguar public charging uh, app. Now, in Britain, I don't believe, well, I certainly didn't get one and I've not spoken to anyone who did. Um, So I think it was just a European initiative. However, as British customers, we can still use the Jaguar app. Within the Jaguar app, if you go on to the iOS one, you can order an RFID card through it. You have to pay nine euros 95, I think it is. Um, That link is not there in the Android app for reasons known to nobody. Um, But all it does is it redirects you to the plug surfing website and you order a card through there. Now I ordered mine. Uh, I was going through a a spay. I've tried to avoid RFID cards and I've decided I can. So now I've ordered them all. <laughs> so I went through a phase of just thinking, right, I love that one, I love that one, I love that one. So I ordered both together within a couple of days of each other. Um, and they both arrived and they both came with the same covering letter, plug surfing headed note paper. The card was not Jaguar branded at all. Both cards were plug surfing cards. I still have no idea which one was which. Um, and the numbers were different numbers on the bike, but in the same format. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, either I got lucky and associated the right one with the right account, or what I truly suspect is the case is it doesn't matter. Um, As long as it's not associated with a plug surfing account already, you can associate a plug surfing card with the Jaguar app. And I, I've, I've followed your instructions and actually done that with, with, a, with a plug surfing card and it, and it works as fine. It's, it's yep. over the can. Um, but this has caused a lot of confusion because if you phone up plug surfing customer services about the Jaguar, Jaguar public charging app, they tell you your dealer should have given you a card. Uh, yes. Even in the UK, which is not the case as far as I can find out. I've spoken to quite a few dealers. They've never they've not heard about this. Um, yeah. I can't get an answer from Jaguar UK on this, but but I'm sure that's the answer. That it, it just wasn't a yeah. service which was provided in the UK. It didn't it didn't make sense as a service in the UK because plug surfing has has virtually no penetration in the UK. Plug surfing is tiny in this country. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is a shame because it's, it's good to be everywhere else. Although a lot of people do complain about the percentage they charge on top of the charge rates because uh, we, we yeah. talked about it being £8.80 for the Jacker plug and charge on Ionity. That's £8 for the charge and 8, 80p for plug surfing. Um, exactly, yeah. So, so, so um, but yeah, I mean, uh, the fact that we've still got a deal in place on, on the plug surfing. I mean, it's a shame in some ways we don't get the European rate because you could actually take out one of their subscriptions, which would give you a discounted rate yeah. on this charging as well. Exactly, uh, yeah. So, but but it, it is nice that you can do that, and I've tested the, the, my new card, and it does work on the IONT charges where they read the fobs, because I'm finding a lot of the modern IONTs don't seem to read the fobs very well. Or the key ah, cards. Ah, see, I, I got the actual card, the credit yeah. card size. Yeah, yeah. So, so and I, card. Sorry, I was just going to clarify. We didn't actually go into it. You, you yeah. brushed, yeah. kind of glanced yeah. off of there. But just to clarify for everyone, at the moment, if you use that Jaguar plug, plug surfing or Jaguar public charging app should i say or the card associated with it on ionity you still pay an eight pounds 80 yeah. flat rate for the session regardless of whether you add one kilowatt hour or 80 kilowatt hours yeah, so it's indeed. eight pounds 80 per charge yes yes so we should yeah make that absolutely clear and i have t- tested that uh, i did actually get a card in the end because the fob was useless <laughs> in, in red, uh, on the new ironties and i did manage but i still found that a couple of the ironities at peterborough will not read that card um so really? I, i'm not sure i'm not sure if jaguar if i honestly have actually enabled all the all the, fob, the key readers because for honesty it makes no sense they they, they don't actually have a card so it, it, yeah, it could be something they don't actually test when they do the install it's a distinct possibility. I mean, I had problems that the one I was using was a new charger, which is why I ended up using the Jaguar card in the first place, um, because I tried the Mango, 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 Mango <laughs> card, yeah. um, and it, it wouldn't recognize it. It wasn't showing up in their app, so I couldn't start it from the app. And when I tried the card, it just said card not recognized. So then I looked in the Jaguar app, the charger wasn't in the Jaguar app either, but then I used the Jaguar card and it, it did recognize it and it did go through. Now, that was getting on for two weeks ago um, and I still haven't been billed for it, so I can't clarify, but it was quoting me £8.80. Yeah, and I, 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 tried, I, tried, I tried the app just just using the app and the, and the barcode reading bit to 
trigger it on the Leeds charger when I did my trip four or five weeks ago, and that that actually worked. Fine, and, yeah. came from, and it has come from a big build build at eight yeah. and eight. So, so I assume that's still that's still the case. If it says it is, yeah. I mean, you'd have a very good case for arguing that if it did say this, said it was listed on the app as being eight and eight, and you weren't charged. Right? Exactly. One yeah. useful tip is take a screenshot when you charge of that price just in case you have an issue um, absolutely then you can show them that screenshot and say you're yeah. yeah. said yeah yeah i have done that on other charges <laughs> before yeah <laughs> but yeah but but these new charges are rather nice i think that, uh, i've, I've mm. seen the video they've got uh, uh, for, for the ipace they're great because they have uh, very long cables which are which are supported yep. By a, a, a gantry type thing, which you pull out and gives you allows you not to have the cable draping across your bonnet, which is yeah. <laughs> moving. And they they seem to be very reliable to start up once they've been set up. I mean, there has been certainly some issues at Peterborough um, where the charges, no, some of the charges just don't work after time yeah. or, give, or give a very low power. But once they're set up, they seem to work really well. Very easy to set up, just basically tap and go. So we would yeah, I mean it cars. was a simple process. There is a video coming of it, so not yeah. it for yeah. for the yeah. channel. But yeah, it was very easy process yeah, that's good stuff so one other bit of news i wanted to talk about was mm-hmm. what cap because we mentioned it earlier <laughs> yeah uh, and uh, edvard's been very busy uh added adding new features and um, one thing he's, he's just been working on is, is integrating into the navigation side into here here maps which i think is yep. really good because because the app the here maps app on or the charity of navigation app on the, the um phone phone particularly on android is, is a little bit clunky and difficult to actually put a destination in it takes so many steps to just get a destination in without it trying to give you just de- de- uh, navigation to where your car is <laughs> as right. well yeah um yeah and it's just difficult you just sometimes you just want to put a, nav- a destination and transfer it to the car and that's yeah. basically what he's added to Bobcat. You can now just key a, de- a destination in, pops up on the map, and you can say save, add it, and it will save it to your favourites on your car, transfer it across straight yeah. away, and works Brilliant. really, really well. Um, and it also means you've got everything in one place because yeah. yeah, I find it slight. I mean, and I know our dev, D, our, our dev does yeah. as well. Um, that Jaguar went down this route of having a route planning app and an in control app. Yeah, you know, and it would have been so much slicker to have them combined. And now, for Android users, at least them um, they they have that. Yeah, I, I guess the the route planning app was supplied by Here Maps because obviously everything yeah. the mapping system is. Um, the other thing about that that uh, um, navigation thing he's added there, which is I found a real boon. I, I don't know about you, but I build up loads and loads of entries in my favourites on maps, and it's a nightmare yeah. to try and delete them all. This yeah, oh, yeah. Really, Made it really easy to go through and delete the ones I don't actually want. So it's oh, probably okay, yeah. worth, worth, it, worth it from that point of view. So um, yeah, that's, that's that's a that's a really good change. Very, very impressed with that. The other thing he's done, um, we we discussed this before, but the the he had this state of uh, charge, help, the state of health of the battery. On, yeah. On, which was completely messed up when H two six four and H two eighty came in because the API no longer supplies data, which is actually useful he's yeah. actually come up with a different algorithm um which gives you and he's not calling battery health it's called uh, is it optimal battery and where it tells you if your battery is optimal or optimal not at each start, state of charge yeah and it seems to work really well mine's coming up 100 uh, percent seems to be quite solid um other people i know who know they've got battery issues have been saying it's showing the battery issue properly so i think that's really yeah. nice it's so, still optional you can choose to use it or not um again it's something if it's if it's if it's showing a, a poor optimization, then don't take that as gospel. You've actually got a problem because it's probably just the API giving you an issue. But um, it, it might be an indicator that you need to get something checked out with, with the. Yeah, garage. you need more evidence than just WalkCat. If all yeah. you've got is WalkCat telling you your state yeah. of health is X or whatever they're calling it, yeah. that's not enough. But you need to be saying, you know, oh, my char- my home charger is saying I only added thirty five kilowatt hours, but it's a hundred percent. Yeah, and what Cat is saying this. Yeah, so what can I give you give you an indication to start looking at some of this stuff? Exactly. And, uh, yeah, just double check it. Um, but, yeah. but that's nice. Nice he's added that. And, now I, it's a I'm, and I'm told that it's not out yet. That there's another new feature coming in the next few days. So more stuff coming all the time, which is really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's a very out. he's a very active developer, <laughs> and it is it's been really good to see. Yeah. Yeah. somebody getting so involved in the in the third party yeah. market for for the jaguar like that yeah. because um because jaguar themselves have uh, their app support well i mean the newer app i actually like but 
Um, but it's still not as good as Walkout or even for that matter, my pace. Okay. Yeah, my pace is good as well. But all good stuff. So have you got anything yeah. else you want to add? Uh, no, I think we've we've pretty much blitzed the years on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just checking down my notes, we covered everything that I had uh, lined up. So yeah, I think uh, that, that's been a good roundup of what's happening in the the iPace world at the moment. Yeah. So so next next time we'll 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 cover off some some of the other apps I think because we've talked about some of the other things which are out there for the iPace and uh, yeah. and a few other bits and pieces and maybe some more charger news as well because I think there's going to be some very interesting charging news. I think out. there's some big developments coming up now with with the whole charging network partly on the back of the government's funding announcement um but also I think just there is a genuine upswing now in in pickup of EVs Partly because I think the the health crisis has made people see how quickly you can improve yeah. your air quality, and partly um, I think just publicity of of the fi- publicity and increased choice yeah. um, have made people much more aware and much more flexible in what they can get hold of. Which is really really good stuff. So I think uh, we'll cover all that that next time. We'll probably also yeah. talk about about because we'll probably have a bit more information about the direction he's going. The the new CEO of um of, of, of Jaguar, uh, yeah. Jaguar <laughs> Um, who's a, who I think is a really good choice, ex ex a guy who's, who's he came from nowhere. Well, not I don't mean he came from nowhere, but it came out of left field that it yeah. caught almost everybody off guard. Yeah. Yeah, so. But I think it's a good choice. He's got yeah. a strong commitment to uh, electric vehicles as well, yeah. which I don't yeah. think will hurt. No, it definitely won't hurt, and he, he understands the market. So yeah, so yeah. Which I think is really good. So, so we'll cover that as well next time as well. Indeed. But, uh, but, for, but for now, that's been a really good evening. It's been good, great to catch, chat, catch up with you again. <laughs> Indeed, same, same. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it tonight. It was great to have a chat to Neil and find out what's happening with uh, with what's up. Yeah, really good stuff. All right, until next time. Take care. Take care. Abadabidud.